Okay, so we are here with Behind the Bikini. This is, is this episode 11? This will be episode 11. We're actually, so we got two in one week because we had number 10 earlier this week. Is that earlier this week though? Yeah. Oh yeah, because it's still Sunday. Yes. So we've lost track of days. You're welcome. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, it is Olympia week, so it's Olympia, it is. It is Olympia week. Well, crazy. Um, and we haven't slept much. No, no sleep. What is that right now? No, it does, doesn't that's, exist. That doesn't. What now? Two weeks out. Two weeks out. Yeah, and I'm Less one than. one day out or one day past. past and... <laughs> we don't even know. This is going to be a great podcast, you guys. <laughs> yes. Please, please pardon us now. <laughs> but we're literally still here in Orlando. Um, I think they're still doing the Superstar seminar. Like they're finishing it up right now. Um, finals was last night uh, for the major divisions, you know, the big boys and for bikini and all that kind of stuff. So um, her, all the fun really started on Thursday. And yeah. then it just kept like Thursday was was a lot of fun, actually. I enjoyed Thursday a lot. And then we kept rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling. And now I'm like, what day is it? <laughs> <laughs> this is like Olympia weekend. This goes. Literally, it's like when you get here, everything starts to just run together. Yes. It's like what it, we got here, what Wednesday, and it's like what did I do? Yeah. What? And and now it's Sunday, and I'm like, when I like both, that? Both of us have no voice. We're no. like, you know, because it starts out with Meet the Olympians, and they've got music blaring and all that kind of stuff on Thursday. So you're screaming over all that. Then you go to the expo on, on Friday, and then you go to the expo on Saturday, and you're screaming over that. You go to finals, and you're screaming over that. So yeah. and then you're screaming for your friends and uh-huh. your teammates. It just yeah. Yeah, so it's we're a here. Long weekend. So we're here. Yes. So we're here. I feel like I didn't get to see you at all at Meet the Olympians. It was just like so yeah. packed. It was great to see though. There were so many people and yeah. fans. It was a really great event this year. I think they did very well. I liked how they set it up this year. So, you know, as I said, I've been to a ton of these Olympias and stuff. And when they would do it in Vegas, um, they would have it set up in New Orleans and they had it set up so that some people were down like in the area where the stage was and stuff okay and then it was a stadium seating so there's like the outdoor area behind the seats and people would be set up around there and it was always so clustered yeah and like you're on top of people and everything and that was terrible i hated that setup and you couldn't find people and all that kind of stuff then last year they had it set up in a big ballroom which was nice too i liked that but it was still was really packed and crowded and it was like it, you had to go through the hallway. When you went through the hallway, they had people set up in the hallway there too. And there was lines, so yeah, you're trying to go so down the hallway, but through. there's a line. And so yeah, you were just completely exposed. Yes, with like people all the time. There was which like, is why I think nothing. everybody got sick. Absolutely. So Absolutely. I like, think they did a much better job at that this year with the room and like yes. how big it was and whatnot. And a lot of the athletes left early this year. Did you notice that? I didn't really pay attention. Yeah, a good amount of athletes left on the earlier side this year, which, you know what, honestly, Thursday before, before Thursday night for Meet the Olympians, for some of the Olympians, like, especially the compete on Friday. Competing the next morning. That's really hard. Like, the figure girls, the fitness girls, if they're there till 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night at Meet the Olympians, and they're waking up for makeup at yeah. 3 a.m., and then they're competing the next yeah. day. So anyway, so some of them did leave a little bit on the earlier side, which, you know, I can appreciate as an yeah. athlete. You know, you got to get to bed, you know? Yep. So... Um, it was interesting. C Bum's line was like all, all the way out the door. All the way out the door. <laughs> it was like he, he's all the way out the door. Night. He's just gonna be here till midnight. Like he was only there for a couple hours, and yeah. then people were still waiting in line just so they could take a picture of his nameplate. Oh, really? That's what they were waiting for on the table. You know, well, people were saying, "Hey, he's not there. He's not there." But I think people thought that they were trying to make a lie to get people out of the line, so people stayed in line. And then they got up there and realized. He wasn't no, he's there. actually not there. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you that don't know, Chris Bumstead is the most popular bodybuilder, period, like hands down right now. Um, he's His fame kind of is on that trajectory of like an Arnold Schwarzenegger kind of thing, you know, because he is the classic physique champion five times now. But beyond that, he has a huge social media pre- presence and you know, supplement companies and all those kinds of things. So when and it great comes human. to, yes. Great yes, human. Yes. Great, great, great People family. love him because he's yeah. very relatable. Um, he's a good person, all those kinds of things, you know, so he's incredibly popular, incredibly popular, even just outside of the stage. He was talking about that at the seminar today uh, because they were asking him, you know, if he was going to keep competing or if he was going to move up to the open men because he was classic. And he said, he said, he's not moving the open. He likes classic. That's where his, his body fits and all that. 
And um, they were saying, well, well, you can make more money in the open. He's like, I don't make money, my money on stage. He doesn't make his money on stage. <laughs> He's like, I'm there for the trophy. He's like, I'm not there for the money. We've talked We've about talked that about this. behind the key bikini. Yeah. <laughs> Even the men, he's yes. like, he may, he's like, you gotta, you gotta learn how to make your money off the stage. Yes. So, and he is also married to Courtney King, who yep. has won a Olympia. Yep. Uh, bikini but, Olympia. Yeah, a Bikini Olympia years yep. ago. But yep. so a dynamic couple. They do a lot for our sport. Yep. His speech last night was was really really cool when he yep. won. Basically talking about how he, um, this was his fifth win, Olympia win in a row. And he was talking about this year, he really wanted to feel the prep. And like, Pull your hair off your mic just so that we don't have scratches on your mic. Sorry. There you go. I was just thinking about that. We're, we've got, we, we're like the, up. Oh, I've got clips here. There Whoa. you go. Look Whoa. at that. <laughs> <laughs> so, talk about his, his speech there. Um, so he was basically saying that he really wanted to feel this prep. Yeah. Um, and nobody knows, I guess he was saying this last night, but at the beginning of the prep, he actually tore his lap. Yeah. So he couldn't train for about two to three weeks, which is a long time when you're in your Olympia prep. Um, and then he said, he, he said, thank God I have a private gym now because the first time I was able to train again, he was like, I was crying and laying on the gym oh. floor. He's like, I was feeling the prep and I told myself that's what I wanted. Um, and then he finished the prep and he was very emotional. It was, it was a really, really cool speech. And one that was very motivating to everyone to remember, you know, to enjoy the journey, but also feel the journey and know that it's not going to always feel good. Yeah. But that's kind of where the reward is at the end. I think the harder the prep, almost the better the victory, you know, Absolutely. when you get it. Yeah. I, I agree with that too. It's like, cause, because going, going back to, that's not how he makes his living. You know, this is how he feels yeah. the sport. You know what I mean? Like if that's, that's you want to feel something, a lot of people do stuff. I say this a lot, like there's a, there's an internal motivation for doing something, right? And sometimes that's not about capital gains. It's not about money. It's not about any of those kinds of things. It's just about the experience and actually the, the feel of the experience and stuff. And that's really cool to hear somebody who's basically got life by the tail, really, you know, talking about how he wants to feel something. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He wanted to feel it. He wanted it to be hard. He wanted it to be challenging. Or arguably, you could say that Chris can keep showing up, but it's his if he keeps wanting it. I mean, he is that good. Yep. Um, but the fact that he's still challenging himself and wants to to feel anything other than comfortability, and that's truly where growth lies. And we've talked about that on the podcast before. So I found that extremely uh, motivating and relatable to everything mm -hmm. that we always talk about. And yeah. it was really cool. It was really well. Really it cool. comes back to the the concept of it's not all, all about winning either. You yeah. know what I mean? It's it's about what you go through to get there yeah. in the process. You know, because that was the thing about when you get to a level like this, when you get to the Olympia level like this, it's not about how hard you work because everybody works hard. Yeah. Everybody works super hard. A lot of times it just comes down to your genetic potential, your your genetic makeup, all that kind of stuff, and it just is what it is. You can nail everybody, everything that you did for that prep and look your absolute best, but there can just be somebody that was born a little bit better than you. Yep. And it is what it is. You know what I mean? And that you see that even like going back to classic physique this evening in classic physique, you got Urs that's coming up. You know, he's what he was third this past year. Third this year. And he's just a couple of years younger than Chris. Yep. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things. It's like, he's the heir apparent, like, you know, and um, it'll go through Dino first. Yep. Right. Yep. So when Chris leaves, then it'll go to Dino, then it'll go to Urs. It was funny. We were laughing um, when they were handing out the trophies last night for classic physique, because they were already standing in, in order for the top five. Like they already knew how it was going to go down. So it was like, it was, it was um, Terrence, then it was Brian, then it was Urs, then it was, then it was Dino. And then it was Chris. They were all literally they standing in the knew. top five lineup. But like, there's no, no surprises here, which is cool though. Like they, their um their perspective of themselves right yeah. they they get it they understand yep. it the camaraderie the the um respect of among athletes i did i did notice that yeah. as well on stage yeah and to your point too now shifting the bikini about what you said um about everybody works hard and that yeah. is something that jen said yep. in her um victory speech she was like at this level Everybody works just as hard. Yeah. And when she said that, I had goosebumps. Because, yep. you know, some people always say, like, oh, that, that person deserves it the most. Or they're the hardest worker in the room. Truly, at the pro level, we are work, we That's all right. work just as hard. Absolutely. And if we don't, then obviously our placing show that. And a true pro does step up at that point and say, hey, listen, I had a terrible prep. I didn't fall my I Just whatever the case was. But at those top five spots at the Olympia, you have to assume that everybody there was working just as hard. Yeah. And it's just about bringing your best that day and making sure you're following that criteria. Mm -hmm polish presentation all those things but i thought that was so cool when she said that yeah. it sent shivers down my spine well and you look at the top five too and every one of them have either won olympias or they've won arnold's the only one in the top five that hasn't won an olympia was laura lee 
all the rest of them, them have won at least one Olympia, right? All of them. Yep. You know, so it's just a matter of whose whose day it is that day. It's not like one of them worked less than the other one. Nope. You know what I mean? Nope. So, um, and the other thing I was I thought was really cool was men's physique with Ryan Terry winning it. Oh, I was so, so happy about that. He talked about that today too. He talked about a few things. So first of all, just so you guys know, that title has always been held by somebody of the race of either black or Asian. No white guys. He's the first white guy. I didn't know the, that. From the UK. Yep. I didn't know that. Yep. Yep. Wow. He's the only one. Okay. Um, now he talked about today that one of the things that he did to separate himself was his posing. Because he stood straight on he did. with his pose and he nobody did. else did. And he said, you know, there's going to be 40, 50 other guys on that stage that are twisted off to the side in their front pose. I'm going to stand straight on. And, that it, pose. and it worked for him. It worked. Yep. Wow. And he's that guy that's been like knocking on the door. He's like top, top five finishes, you know, top eight. He's always in the, in the top 10 somewhere. You know what I mean? And he yeah. finally, honestly, I didn't think he was going to win it. I'll be perfectly honest with you. I didn't think he was going to win it. I didn't either, but we were hopeful. But he did. Yep. Yeah, yeah, but he did. I think he came showing up the best for the new criteria Agreed. that they're going to make. Absolutely. In addition to that yes. front pose that I thought was different and definitely captivating, he was the one that was also wearing the new board short, board short um, rules for next year, the two inches above the knee. Oh. He was the only one out of, the, out of the top five that just implemented that at this year's Olympia, which means that he's more, in my opinion, Closer criteria. to the criteria that they're trying for to make year. for next year. So mm -hmm. I think those were two really good decisions then on yeah. his part. Absolutely. You know, and he's got that, that you know, fitness model look. He does. Which is what it was always supposed to be with um, with men's physique. You know, they started putting in these weight limits and things like that and, and height limits for your weight limits for your height and stuff like that for men's physique. Because men's physique guys are getting to the point where they look like bodybuilders, you know, and it was never supposed to be like that. Right. It's like these guys can put, if they don't put a lot of mass on their lower half, they can put a lot of size on their upper half. Yep. And all of a sudden they're bigger than some of these classic physique guys because the only part that they're showing is their upper body. Right. And they're able so, to yeah. hide it because of the because board of shorts. The board so yep. that's where the, the Mannions and the IFBB Pro League are trying to bring those shorts up a little bit higher. Yep. So they do have to expose their legs because a lot of them were just putting the mass on their upper body. That's right. And they're trying to they're trying to find that balance. And just like bikini for us or in the girls' divisions, it's supposed to be the most attainable. That's what 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 the men's physique cap category was supposed yep. to be. But these guys were getting even bigger than the classic guys. And it was like the yep. the criteria was kind of getting gray again. So I think that was a really great choice for this year and where they were trying to head with that division. I was really happy about that. And everything that you just said with the, him being the first um, white, we would say white male and yep. everything else. And even from the, from Europe too, because he's from the UK. That's incredible. Yeah. Uh, what an accomplishment. Cause it was so cause happy the, with the that. guys that have won it in the past. We've got Jeremy who came back. Yeah. He came back. Yep. Um, Mark Anthony, who's Jennifer Dory's husband. He won it. AOG. Um, and then you've got Brandon, Brandon you've got Anderson. Eric. Yep. Eric. And that's all of them. Or Aaron Banks. Aaron, it? sorry. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, Aaron. Aaron. Yeah. That's, that's all. They've all like mixed, mixed around. Mixed around. Yep. yep. <laughs> I missed anybody in there? I don't think I, don't I missed think anybody. So. I don't think so. I think that's everyone. Breon hasn't won one. No, no, nope. Just wrong category. Nope. Yep. 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 We that's got them. Hi. We're, we're, we're good. recording. Thank yeah. You. Thanks. <laughs> 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 okay, we had a guest. <laughs> Hello. Um, so anyway, so everyone was saying, oh yeah, so um, we just wrapped up men's physique. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's go back to the attainable thing because I think the shock of the show, honestly, was Laura Lee and Bikini. I think, I, yeah, I do think that people were shocked. I wasn't shocked. How about you? Well, I was shocked at, that she came in looking how she looked. Okay, what do you mean by that? Big. Okay. I, th I was expecting that. I was not expecting her to be as big as she, as okay. she was. Okay. Um, because they told her at the Arnold not to change anything. Yeah. So I kind of assumed she wouldn't change anything. <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. And, you know, I listened to her podcast and things like that. And, you know, just based on how she was talking and things like that, you can never tell how somebody's going to look from Instagram posts and stuff like that. But just based on how she was talking, I thought she was going to bring in a very similar package to what she had at the Arnold. And it was not at all. Yeah. Not at all. This was like, what it reminded me of is when she, a few years ago, she came out and did the Chicago Pro and she was so big in the glutes and her glutes were so big and overpowering. And they all told her that she was too big. Bring them down, yeah. Um, so I was really, really surprised to see that she went that direction. Yeah. A, I don't think she was in condition enough. That was, that was the big thing. Yep. But B, her legs and her glutes grew so much and her shoulders were down. Yeah. So she looks really unbalanced. Small up top to yeah, the bottom. Yeah, she looks yeah. really unbalanced. Yep. So I'm really surprised about that because 
I feel like she's walking this line of, if you're going to do that, you just need to go and be an influencer. You know what I mean? Versus if you're going to, if you want to win a title, you have to adhere to criteria. Yeah. So, you know, you got to kind of choose which one you're going to do. And maybe that is her, um, the, the hard part right now. Yeah. I mean, I could say, and I'm sure you can too, as a bikini athlete, we're kind of in a box with our training. Yep. You know, we've talked Absolutely. about this. It's, yeah. it's boring, yep. you know, when you're at the pro level. There's, it's, our training is not fun at, sometimes. You know, we can't do a lot of compound movements. We can't do a lot of heavy movements. Yeah. And when, if there, there is a choice that has to be made, and maybe that's, that's the hardest thing for her, is she likes to train. And yeah. I love that about her. She loves to train. Yep. But with the criteria and this box that we're in, that type of training may need to be, you know, limited down. And maybe that's, that's hard for her. I don't know. Yep. But I mean, I love that shape. I love those glutes, but, but it's not, the it's, it's not what's getting awarded yeah. right now. So you know, you go back to like Aaron Stern, she stopped competing this year because she said, she's like, I'm not training how I like to train. Yeah. She goes, in order for me to fit the criteria, I have to train and downplay my training so much. I'm not enjoying it. Absolutely. So she's decided not to compete. You know, that's, that's what you do. You know yeah. what I mean? You have to make those kinds of decisions. Yeah. You have to make those kinds of decisions. So, you know, I, I, I thought that if she had brought in, I thought Rorley, I thought Rorley had brought in the same package from the Arnold, she would have been in the fight to win a hundred percent, but it wasn't. Yeah. She was the biggest bikini competitor on that stage. Period. Yeah. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Yep. It was a lot of muscle and they were either going to go that direction. That's what I said to myself. Yeah. They were going to head that direction and that, that big fullness in the lower half or they weren't. Yep. Um, and they didn't. So, yep. you know, we just got to, now we have our new standard back to, yep. and it, well, congratulations to Jen. I mean, yep. taking her title back. I think somebody said this is the first time somebody has reclaimed a title in, um, in bikini. bikini. Yes. In okay. Bikini, yes. So huge, after losing it, huge, yes. huge accomplishment mm -hmm. for Jen. I mean, yep. huge accomplishment. Um, so there, what did you think about that? What did you think about her winning? Did you have her winning? I I I, I did have her winning. Okay. I did have her winning and yesterday. Why did you have her winning? To me, Maureen, Maureen's look was off a little bit to me. And I'll tell you guys why. So she was last to go out, mm -hmm. right, for yeah. um, individuals and comparison and whatnot. And I was first. So, like, I was behind her in right, line, right, right? Right, right, yeah. I didn't even realize that was Maureen in front of me with um. the red suit. And she was so she was dark. dark. Yeah, she was very dark. She was really dark. And I didn't really see any details. It didn't look like Maureen, you know, when she's so bubbly and big. Mm -hmm. And I didn't see those details, I think, because mm -hmm. of her polish. So when they announced her name and she walked up, we all looked at each other and we're like, that's more like because we were expecting pink suit and right. we didn't really see her backstage. They probably had her in like a private area. Um, and then when she got on stage, I just didn't really feel like I saw her details the okay. same as last year. And when Jen came out in her suit, um, you know, I just felt like she had a little bit more shape and, you know, more, more of that standard this year. I just, I just saw more better polish and I don't know. I, I just, see, I saw it differently. Okay. Um, you know, this from is the, totally me yeah. and Sean. Always. I know. Right. I saw it differently. So, um, I, I recognize Maureen immediately because when she took fourth that one year, two years ago, she was in red and it was a very similar look. Okay. I loved her in red. She's, okay. She was, she was always in red all the way up until she started placing really well. And then she started changing her, um, her colors. Okay. So I, I was happy with the red. I loved the red on her. It was very saucy, very sexy. And to me, I liked that. I thought that fit her very well. Okay. Um, she definitely had uh, the smile still going on, which was a problem in the past where she didn't smile enough. Um, people were talking about the tan being too dark. I kind of can see that. Okay. Okay. But at the same time, I felt like it was okay. Her, her, where I was looking for improvement from her from last year was in her rib cage and in her glutes. And she had improvement in both those areas. So I agree with immediately that. I was like, oh no, she, she then hit it. it. She, Cause she, she, she corrected, corrected those it. problems. Exactly. Correct. I could see that. Immediately thought, no, she corrected her issues. Yep. She's good. Yep. You know? Um, with Jennifer, Jennifer is incredibly difficult to beat from the front because her waistline is so teeny tiny, so tiny. Like if I was putting them together on stage, I would have Jennifer winning the front pose, yes. right? The front pose is Jennifer's like hands down Jennifer's right. Maureen from the back. Yeah. Maureen from the back. I agree with that. Maureen from the back. I agree with that. Um, where I have an issue with Jennifer is she's tilted in her back pose. She is. She is. And she has an imbalance in her glutes. Yeah. So that's where I had a problem. I didn't think she was going to win the title because of that. Yeah. 
Um, I wasn't a huge fan of the green. I think she looked good in green, but not that shade of green. Okay. Um, if she was in a green like Ashley's, that would have been spot on. So here's something else two people are saying. I thought the suit was green too. I saw her in person backstage and I was like, ooh, green, that's different for her. Mm -hmm. Someone said it's teal. Yeah, it, it's, but it looks it's like a mint. So the coloring okay. of the actual suit itself is kind of a mint, but then the stoning on top is more of a green. Okay. So you pull that green. Okay. Um, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Jessica Wilson's old suit. Okay. Um, and it, to me, it just kind of washed out a little bit. Yeah. I would have liked to see a little bit more depth of color. So yeah. again, like the green, like the depth of color, like Ashley had that I think would have been better just on the stage lights and everything. When With you her see, hair. Yes. Yeah, so when you see Jennifer off stage, the suit and everything is gorgeous. But then once you get her underneath the lights, the lights. everything washes out. Yeah. So, I personally love her purple. Yes. Agree. I, I, I would, I would have rather seen her back in her purple. <laughs> yeah. I, I would have rather seen her in the purple. I think the yeah. purple was the better, was yeah. the better choice. She's stunning either way, but yes. that's just my personal preference yes. about, you know, we all have our favorite, you know, bikini girls and their looks and things. That's why no, I can't get away from blue. Everybody loves yep. me in blue. Yep. So I'm not going to get away from blue, but my personal favorite of Jen is in her purple. It's just like, that's just like her look to me. No, I completely agree yeah. with that. I thought that the, I think that purple for her is the, is the look. Yeah. Um, I thought that her front pose was a thousand times better than, than before. Um, she balanced it out really well. I thought that um, I thought that her tan was a little bit light, but that could also have been just because of her suit, you yes. know, being again being a like little washed con out. Yeah, the contrast. So her, her tan could have been fine. It could have just yeah. been the suit against it. Um, and her conditioning from the back, I thought, was great too. I thought yeah. she had like that was really really good conditioning for Jennifer from the back, especially because she typically comes in a little bit too soft yeah. for a show. So. Yeah. Um, I thought she did a really good job. She softened up from last year where she was too hard, all of that. Um, but again, I just kept going back to the tilted glutes in the back. And that's why I couldn't, I couldn't give her the first place position at that point. Yeah. A lot of people were saying that they, I didn't get to see like uh, prejudging with her, but a lot of people said that they were seeing the tilt again. Yes. And then sometimes they said that she was hitting it perfectly. So it's either that she probably has some sort of like issue, issue with her hips yeah. and she just has to hit that back pose consistent, yes. consistently, perfectly not to see it. That could be really hard. You know, there's so many athletes with scoliosis and they yes. have to literally tilt their hips. So to, to that athlete, it feels like they're doing this, but to us visually, it looks like they're level. Yep. That's where yep. posing can be very difficult. So yep. maybe it's just a posing thing. Who knows? But yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it as well that Jennifer won. I think Jen is a great representation for our sport. Yeah. Like she gives back a lot. Um, you know, she's in the States, you know, so I think that she, you know, she has her show, High Roller, yes. in December. That's and that's one thing I will weeks. say. I think she's a really, really good ambassador of the sport Absolutely. in general. Like, Absolutely. Probably the best Absolutely. of all of them. I mean, her and Mark, they show up, they yep. do things, they put on events. And to me, that's the, you know, that, that is the title, you know, mm -hmm. for the, it's, it's like beauty pageants, you know, the next year you're doing your media and you're showing up at things um, in bodybuilding. You kind of have to do those things yourself. There's no obligations. You don't have to do anything. Yep. But of course, I mean, if I won Miss Bikini Olympia, I would want to give back to the sport that given so much to me. And I think that they do really good yeah, job. I agree. That. I agree with that for sure. So, so I'm glad so that she, that she took it. With, with all of that said, you know, I'm going to do a full i do a full recap of on it. Um, but because I did Spotify, I did do okay. it, but because the signal was so bad in there, so it wouldn't bad. process and it wouldn't save. Oh, so I lost no. the entire thing. Lost the entire thing. Guys, there was like no signal. None. Zero. I couldn't I wasn't talk even to getting anyone backstage. Yeah. I wasn't I couldn't get text messages to go yeah. through. And Nothing. our coaches weren't allowed backstage and we had zero Nothing. cell service. So all of us were trying to like turn our phones on and off. It was terrible. Yeah, it wow, was really bad. Stinks. So I was really pissed because it's sitting it just sat there in my Spotify and just spun, spun, spun. And spun, you're just spun, like, please spun, don't spun. Please. I was like, of course. So thankfully I did take videos of most people's individuals. So okay. I'll put those together into a YouTube wrap, wrap up and everything like that. But photos are on NPC news online. Yeah. And I think the scorecards are up already too they as are. well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. And I think if you bought the pay-per-view, which I did, I think you can go in and once they process everything, you can go in and watch the replays and, and, re stuff and like redo it. Oh, okay. I, think, I did I'm that pretty too. Sure. Okay. I'm pretty sure you can do that. Perfect. I'm going to do that too then. Um, what did, how did you feel about your look? I am really happy. I am really, really happy and I get it. I totally get my placing. Um, as soon as I saw the comparison line in my photos, I was a little too hard and I needed to be a little bit fuller. Um, that was my feedback. Yeah. So like I said to Drew, you know, backstage, what do you think? He's like, you were just a little bit too hard compared to everybody else. I think yeah. you need to be a little bit fuller. And that was exactly what my feedback was. Okay. I'm really happy with my posing. Yeah. I'm really happy with the comparison rounds and how I held my, my ground. 
I don't think I could have done anything more except for eat maybe a little more. Yeah. Um, but I mean, no, I'm, I'm, I'm ecstatic with top Good. 20. I, I yeah. am, you know, and I cut, cut from last year. I was 40 something last year. So I yeah. cut that in half. That's a huge improvement. Yep. Um, I, 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 I truly am very happy. Good. You know, and that was something that I noticed, like when I was doing my preview and stuff like that, of who I thought could be potentials and all of that, there were a few surprises that were up in the, you know, the top 15 that I wasn't expecting to be up there, but almost everyone that I thought would be in that range of like the 20 ish, they were. Yeah. Um, like you guys, you and Jessica and Evie and all of you were all in like the same, same call, out. call out. Yep. Um, and that was right outside of the, you know, the top 10, top 15 uh, placings. So it played out pretty much how I thought it would. Um, most of the European competitors were down towards the bottom, yep. you know, those kinds of things. But we talked about all that stuff. It's just the, the yep. criteria you got. It, there is a specific criteria. And there were a the lot States. of girls that were in, you know, those last couple of call outs that if they had competed here more, maybe gotten some posing feedback, you know, gotten some pre presentation feedback, things like more that. Time they on probably stage. could have moved up. Absolutely. Um, yeah. But they were just a little off on a lot of little things. And that adds up when you're against the best in the world. I mean, it just is what it is. That's what happens. Yeah. When you're at the Olympia, if you're having a 10% off day, that's, yep. that is a lot of placings at yep. the Olympia. Yep. It's a 10% off. Yeah. 5% off is a Were lot. you surprised at anybody's placing? Yeah, there was a few people. I mean, definitely a shocked for a few things, but I think the, the main, um, I want to say competition was like that 10, 10 to 20 spot. Right. That's where everybody was like, who, who's going to end up where, um, top 10. I'm not, I'm not shocked about it at all. Yeah, um, not shocked about the top 10 by any means. So a little couple of people in the, like the 11 to 15 spot. Yeah. It's, yeah. So it's, but really it's, it's anybody's game at that point. It's who's posing the best that second. Yep. I mean, I was up there. Those judges were talking a lot. Yeah. Um, I know that they were just making sure that they weren't missing anybody, you know, like, uh, at one point, they were calling Rihanna's number out there. They had not called her out, and they kept saying, you know, down the line, number twenty-two, number twenty-two, number twenty, and then they called yeah. her back. So they were they they did a very, very, very good job. Yep. Um, I don't know how they do it sometimes, but yeah, I definitely, you know, just just it was it was curious, very yeah. curious of how it was all going to go down. There was a few like um, one that I didn't predict in the top was Ariana, um, and she ended up being top ten. Yep. And I'll say the reason why I didn't predict her is because she always tended to come in a little bit too soft at the other shows she was at. And at this show, she came in, in tighter. So all of a sudden, she's up in the up in that top spot, you know? And so that she's one that came in second to me at Hurricane yep. a couple weekends ago. Her feedback was just to come in a, a little, little tighter. bit tighter in the midsection, and she would have had it. And I think she came in. Yes, she did. She, she did just that. Yep. Um, and she definitely has that, those, that beautiful glute shape those nice long tie-ins and then she came in with that 3d yep. that that glute density and that to her that that is a dynamite look that's right um her name hat was thrown around of being a top 10 olympia one day yes people didn't correct. think it was gonna Not be this, this year. year correct so exactly huge congratulations to her yep. i mean that, that was a big one that was huge that second call out there was a few girls like i wasn't expecting to see vanya there yeah. um tamikia um ariel yeah those are all girls that I thought had potential, like in a couple of years, yeah. kind of thing. But they all showed up, yeah. you know. Um, the one I think probably one of them that was that was most surprising was Ariel because she's just been really inconsistent. Yeah. When she first came out on the scene as a pro, I was like, oh my god, she's gonna be a top ten Olympian. Like when she first came out, but then she would come out and be so in inconsistent with her packages okay. that you just never knew what she was gonna show up with. Her conditioning mostly was what was off. So to see her be able to nail that was kind of cool. I wasn't expecting to see her up there. Um, one of the girls I thought was, uh, that would be better than she was, was Romina. Yes. I yeah. thought Romina would be higher, okay. but her conditioning was off. We'd see it in her, her midsection. Midsection, yeah. Um, and that's, if, if Romina's going to be a little off, that's where you see it, is in her midsection. Yeah, and I was standing next to her in the comparison round. Yeah. On the first, the first comparison round. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's definitely something that they're looking for this year, I think, was that super tight, tight waist, waist and those big bubbly glutes. Like, yeah. that's exactly what the, yep. they were going for in that top 15. Yep. They really are talking about, in all feedback right now, waist. They want to see that tight, tight mm -hmm. waist. Yep. What did you think of Yulia? Yulia looked amazing. Mm -hmm. I am so ha proud and happy for her. And not only that, just the athlete that she is, yeah. you know, backstage and how beautiful she is as a person inside and out but her she looked 
stunning. She and did. she held her own up there. She sure did. Her shape, her conditioning, mm -hmm. her fullness. I mean, everything was on put point. She's next year. She just yeah. needs to get more on her resume. She's gonna. She's yeah. gonna climb the ranks. She. I thought. I thought she was just a, still still a little bit too hard, specifically in the legs, and you could see it in the diamond hamstring drop. Okay. You know, one of the things that that I noticed is like that third call out. Like you, you were saying, you were a little bit too sharp. Everybody in that third call out was a little bit too sharp. Okay. And okay. then same thing when we went down to the next call out. Those girls were most of them were a little bit too sharp. Yeah. And then you started getting to the girls that were a little bit too soft. Yep. You know so. They do reward the conditioning to an extent, you know what I mean? Once you get to that over the line kind of point, yes, and you start getting penalized. Yeah. But if you come in a little soft, you're going to be towards the bottom. Yeah. And for me and, and Yulia, with these super short yeah. glute hamstring tie-ins, yeah. this is something that Drew and I were talking about. Why I come in so hard is because I have to get have so to. lean in order for them yes. to be seen. So that's where now in this off season, I got to get that density yep. in those tie-ins, which is not a lot, but enough that I don't have to get as lean for them to be shown. And so that's I can keep where that I'm at right now. Exactly. <laughs> and that's the hard part, right? <laughs> yeah. Some of these girls are just genetically blessed yes. with these long huge long tie-ins. They don't have to get as lean yep. and it's not as hard for them to get that pop and that density. Yep. So that's where genetics play a role in that's that, right. you know, and that's our thing that we have yep. to work on. And that's literally, so I had my check-in with Jamie on Thursday okay. and she was How like, you know? good. She's like, you just need to pull a couple of pounds off the hamstrings. So it's the same thing. I have those really short, high glute, glute insertions. And I'm like, yep, I know. Which means <laughs> everything else from the hips up yes. gets over dieted. Yeah. Right. And then there's, there's where it's imperative to have a coach that knows how much to pull back. So mm -hmm. then how much to feed you and fill you out. And that's the hardest yep. part with me is how much conditioning do we have to do? And then how much food do we have to press? But then we don't want to press too much food that you lose the lines and it's that it's a tough yep. balance and that's what you know even even drew said he's like i think from the waistline up you're ready it's like you just gotta pull it in a little bit more i'm like yeah uh, trust me i know welcome, <laughs> welcome to bikini <laughs> i mean that's most women in general but then when, again when you're starting talking about like genetic shapes and things yeah. like that i mean it, it's just it's what it is i'm like i'm you know really happy with the shape um all that kind of stuff but it's just you have to be tight enough to see those 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 lines coming yeah. in the back yeah. you know um, and again, we're at the Olympia, yeah. you know, like that third call out, fourth yeah. call out could win a show on any day. Yep. It's literally splitting hairs at that yep. point for any one of those call outs. Yep. So I have a question for you. Okay. Um, uh, -oh. so, <laughs> uh, Val, Valeria, she, she pulled out, she decided not to compete because she didn't want to be in the sea of 50. Right. Yes. So what do you, what is your personal opinion on that? As far as, do you think that was a good move or do you think that was a bad move or what do you, what are your thoughts on that? What would you have done in her situation? Honestly, I give her a lot of uh, credit and respect. I, I, um, I think that it was a good call. I think she verbalized kind of what we've already said. The European girls, when they come over here are not to the standard. Yeah. Um, I do think the post came off not the way she was trying to yes, say it. Um, the, the context of it, I think, or the, the language of it, I think that people were taking it as, uh, as that she was trying to be rude or something. I think it's just, just the, the language barrier. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was a great decision. I think basically what she was trying to say is, I qualified, but why would I go for them just to tell me you need you more need or you need yeah. this? And she's very realistic with herself. Yep. You know, qualifying for the Olympian itself is a great goal. That doesn't mean you have to step on stage in order to be an Olympian. True. You know, she, she earned that right. She doesn't want to waste any time, plus the travel, the cost, and things like that when she's so reasonable with herself just to be told that she's not matching the criteria yet in the States. Right. I don't know. I give her a lot of credit. Do I think she could have came and gotten feedback and had a positive experience from that too? Yes. Mm -hmm. Personally, if I was her, I would have maybe made the same move. Really? See, I wouldn't, but here's the thing. Here's the, where I come at it from too, is the experience aspect of it. Yeah. Um, it is qualifying for the largest stage in, in the country or country of the world. And um, there are hundreds of other girls that would love to have that opportunity. They True. don't have the opportunity. True. You know, and, she's and, taking that. and she took the opportunity and, I, I get that you know, and, didn't, and isn't allowing somebody else to take that opportunity. You know what I mean? Um, so maybe that's a bad mentality to have, meaning like you, if you're, if you want to be on that stage, you better have won something and, you know, she didn't take anything from anyone. So I get all of that aspect. Definitely. What I'm saying though is, is that she was given an opportunity and she decided not to take not it. Not to take it. 
I see that perspective too. Right. And I, and I, I think that's a great point. Yeah. And I think, I think what you're saying is right. I think she would have ended up probably in that fourth, fifth call yeah. out. I think that's where she would have landed. But there are hundreds of other girls that would have been over the moon to have even just stepped on that stage, you know, and get the feedback, get next to those top people in the world. You put yourself, and I mean, she did that when she went to Pittsburgh and, you know, all that kind of stuff. I, I get that. But put yourself into that, that arena and get the feedback there because she doesn't, she did it last year. She did the Olympia last year. She doesn't look the same as she did last year. So maybe a she's point. a little bit better this year. Who knows? You know, maybe you, you try something for yeah. the states. Yep, being honest on a yeah. stage in the states. Yeah. So I see your points yep. too. I yep. definitely see your points. And I, and again, I, I understand where you're yep. coming yep. from. I get it. Yep. And I, I also understand where her mentality is. Is like I I don't want to do this until I know I can place better. Yeah. I get that. I understand that. But it's just like it's almost like trying to skip over a, a, a regional show before you go up to a national show or something like that. Like you, you That's still. A great like you still need to, to work your way up the yeah. ranks, right? Yeah. And the only way to do that is to, to show up. Yeah. You know, look at somebody like um, Keon. He was just talking about this. Who just won the 212. You know, he talked about how he was the prodigy. You know, he came out right thought he was going to be the, this next big thing. He took, like, whatever it was his first year. And then the next year he comes out and he was 14. Right. Went down. Yeah. Down in placings. They thought that he was going to keep going up. He went to 14. You know, he could have just not showed up that day. Yeah. But he did. He showed up. He did it. No way it was his going to be a bad package yeah. i remember that like it was yesterday yeah and then he came back last year and was sixth and now he came back this year and won it won it won the title won the whole thing so it's like you know he, he probably needed that 14th place to kick him in the ass yeah yeah sometimes through our loss i mean sometimes all the time through our losses is where we figure out how to yeah. be a champion you i know? feel like you learn more from your losses than you do your wins 100 oh, yeah, percent. If, if you don't then you're not taking the experience right and i'm thinking and in my head i'm thinking okay if i want to be the best in the world I have an opportunity to go stand next to the best in the world that most people don't have that opportunity. I'm going to go take that opportunity. Yeah. You know, it's funny that you said that I did have an interaction backstage yesterday, post pre-judging. Yeah. And, uh, we, you know, as the call outs are being finished, we're being dismissed. And they told us when we come off stage, just hold out here just in case Sandy calls you back. We, we knew we weren't going to get called back in mm -hmm. the third, fourth call out, but we stood there because we weren't dismissed yet. And there's a monitor backstage so you could see what's going on. And so some of us girls were hanging out. Um, so I'm Brandon. So I was kind of the first one at the monitor. And then as girls were coming off stage, everyone was kind of lining up and watching. And every time someone would come up, I would say congratulations. And I said congratulations to an athlete. And they kind of came back with, for what? And I was like, for being here. For being here, yeah. You know, like, yeah. Like, I think I, you know, and I didn't really know how to take that at first. And another girl came up and it was, it was Julia. Okay. And she was, Julia goes, gosh, I'm just so happy to be here. And I was like, you know, we are 5% of the world on this stage today. Mm -hmm. Think about how many pros we competed at. And I'm talking to these girls. Think about mm -hmm. how many pros we competed with this year that, you know, when we wanted our shows. That would kill to be here and be in that right. last call out. They just want right. to be here. That's right. And um, I don't know. I found that to be really interesting yesterday, you know, just perspective and i'm glad that i am just so full of gratitude no truly no matter what happened yesterday i do feel just so blessed that i was able to be there yeah. and that's the, the win in itself to absolutely me. you know and, and i talked about that we talked about that last week when we were talking about going um and competing in japan and all that kind of stuff and in hawaii like we're blessed to be able to do that kind of stuff yeah. you know what i mean there's there's a full percentage of our population that can't even dream about doing that yeah you know so i always go back to that it's like you got to remember where you are yeah you know, you got to remember that this is special yeah. and that you don't get this every day, Yeah. you know, and yeah. take advantage of that because who knows, maybe tomorrow and not wishing this on anybody, but maybe tomorrow you go out and you, you'll get hit by a car and you can never compete again. Can't train. Yeah. You know, look at all the people that dropped out this year because of injuries. Look at fitness. Okay. Uh, oh gosh, my heart hurts. Freaking her. Whitney. Whitney. Uh, Whitney injured herself during her routine. She finished her routine. So she was scored. And then Missy, who was the reigning Olympia champion, barely even started a routine and popped her knee and couldn't finish. So she didn't even, she didn't even place. She, she, just did, she just did not finish. Could you imagine? She was, she was first after yeah. the first round. Yeah. She was definitely going to win it It was the best again. physique that I've seen her put on stage she as far was, as conditioning is concerned. She's always had a good physique, but her conditioning's always been a little off. Yeah. Her conditioning was perfect this yeah. time. 
and literally walks out, starts the routine, and boom, done. Yep. Just like that. And, and she who knows was, how bad that injury is. That's what she's saying. She said she's really ready for the challenge to come back, but it might need to be in a different division. Yeah. Which means she would come back for figure, figure. and she wouldn't do fitness anymore. But that's that is terrible. Yeah. She is so great at fitness. Yep. But if your body's not holding up, you gotta listen, you yes. know. Whitney told me, um, I saw her in here in makeup yesterday. She tore her rotator cuff six weeks ago. Mm. So she knew she was on borrowed time. Mm. Um, she actually put, she dislocated her shoulder on stage, which if you guys don't know is it, you would rather just tear your shoulder than yeah. dislocate it. It is, it is a terrible feeling. I've never had popped it done. Her back in is what I heard. She popped it in herself. Oh my gosh. She said she went backstage. She asked for a towel. Someone threw it in her mouth and she did it herself. <sighs> and Gosh, that poor girl when I saw her yesterday, but she was in such great spirits and she's I love injured Whitney. herself so many times that she's like, she's like, this is like old, old she's, half. Exactly. Her. She's like, what? This is another day. This is another Olympia. And it was, it was yesterday morning. She was just, she's like, I still have all day here. I'm good. I'm on okay, yep. I'm good. Um, but Missy, yeah, they, they had to get her home and things like that. But yeah, if there's so many people had to drop out, Nick Walker this year, yes, Nick Walker was gone. Brandon Curry was sick. They didn't think yep. that he was going to make it. He did, but like, mm -hmm. right. Like, how much would these athletes would love to have finished their routine yes. or to have been on stage this weekend? And think of Nick, he literally just finished a prep and wasn't able to step yep. on stage. Yep. I couldn't imagine. Nope. I mean, and just looking at some of these guys that weren't able to get visas to come in either. Uh, there were so many of those. That was, you know, that was terrible. And that, you think, somebody, somebody like Val, you talk about her, I mean, that could, that could be a potential. Absolutely. Where you can't get here to the States to compete. <laughs> Absolutely. You know? And yeah, I, 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 I get, I get your point though on her and yeah, I think we both have points on that for yeah. sure, but I, I definitely see your perspective, yep. but I, yeah, what you, I do think that steal, stealing or taking that spot and then not showing up. Yeah. That, that yeah. is a gut punch. Yeah. That is a gut punch you know, for and, all and those it, shows. It is. And it's like, you know, it's one of those things. It's like, maybe that's the, the poor sportsman in, in me, yeah. like saying that because it's like, you know, you say, well, you sh they still should have beat her kind of thing. You know what I mean? But I mean, if you, if you don't think you're good enough, then why are you doing it? If you don't think you're good enough to be on that stage, why are you competing for that stage? Yeah. Well, we'll see what improvements she makes yeah. now. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully she comes next year. We'll, we'll know she'll qualify. She's already qualified. She's already qualified. She's, She's qualified. already qualified. Yep. She's yeah. qualified. She was the first one, right? First one yes. to qualify. And then I was okay. Yep. Yay. Yep. So we'll see her next year. <laughs> yep. So, and, and that's what I was saying. I was like, you know, I, I, I can understand the mentality. I can get where she's coming from because now it's like she does. She has a full year to make these, to make these improvements and all that kind of stuff. And she can start now. What's another two weeks? Do you know what I mean? What's another two weeks? Two weeks Just on freaking get on stage. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny because there's a lot of girls that are actually, that I know that are going to Atlantic Coast in a couple weeks. Yeah. Because they're like, what's another, what's two, another weeks? two weeks? It's really, going. really like when you're at this level, what is another two weeks? Yep. You know, like go get, go out, have your post-show meal, go have an intuitive eating day, get right back on plan. You should be able to pop into a show if you want to in a couple of weeks. Yeah. So, but we'll see. It's going to be interesting to see after the Olympia who does what yeah. or who shuts it down. So there's still some things that are still exciting post-show Olympia to yeah. kind of keep an eye out mm -hmm. for because there's still some shows going on until the end of this year. There's a few. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's, is there, any, there's nothing this week. Is there, there's a, there's a master's pro show this coming weekend. The, the, the Caribbean there's one or Derek whatever it is. There. Our winner. Yep. yep. Um, yeah. So there is a Texas show next weekend, but not for bikini. Right. Uh, it's just pro figure. Yeah. And then the following weekend, there's Hawaii and there's um, Ben Weeder and there's Orange. <laughs> the running after Derek. <laughs> Drew's going to say hi to Derek. <laughs> there's Ben Weeder. There's the Atlantic Coast. There's a couple overseas. There's Romania and Frog, I think, overseas. There's well, there's five pro shows, five pro bikini pro shows next weekend. Not this weekend, next weekend. Then that, and then you're going to be Hawaii. Yes. Hawaii first. Yep. Okay. And then there's Japan. And then right after that is Taiwan. Okay. But um, my husband doesn't want to go to Taiwan because of all the civil unrest. And all yeah. Kind of stuff it's so a little crazy. Come, come, come home after Japan, which is fine because I get to stay in Japan an extra day and eat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> an extra day and yes. eat. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I was talking to Jennifer, um, yeah. one, of, one of my girls that was just here. Cutie. Ago. Yeah. I see, I see cutie. And she's, she's also in prep. She's doing the uh, Ben Meter. And she's just like dreaming of all these things that she can eat, right? I'm like, I don't. I'm like, I don't feel that. I'm like, I don't, I've had not, not had a, I'm like sitting there, I'm sitting there eating my raisin bagel though. And I'm like, I really haven't had that. I haven't had a hard prep. I haven't had a hard prep. So, um, I will say, don't we hate her for that? <laughs> don't we hate her for that? Hey, I had a hard prep last year. So, okay. All right. We, so you're, we've you're, all been there. you're okay. we've all been there. You're in line for a uh -huh. good one. Got it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and 
this whole week, this is the first time I've ever done an Olympia where I've been in prep. Okay. Um, my diet's been fine. I haven't had a problem with hitting my macros at all. Zero. I've gotten all my training in, gotten all my cardio in. The only thing that I've had a hard time with is sleeping. Yeah. We've talked sleeping. about that. Yeah. So, but I always have a hard time with sleeping no matter where I go, like if I'm not home. So, you know, the, the first night that I was here, the people in the room next to me were talking the whole time. I'm noticing that here too. I can hear everything yes. through the walls. They were in talking this hotel. the hotel. Last night it was really bad. <laughs> All night long with this per these people. <laughs> okay, so there's, oh, there's, there's, there's that. that. Um, yeah. um, <laughs> um, <laughs> well, you and I are in different hotels too because you were here at the Rosen. Yeah, I was I over was, at, the, at the Hyatt. I was here and I hear everything going on next door. That's so funny. And then so when like Drew and I are talking, I'm like, shh, what's going yeah. on? Can you hear me? Well, anyway. Oh, wow. So, my yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. So I, that was the first night. The second night, I actually slept pretty decent. The, the second night, um, but not very long. It's so, not getting deep sleep at all. No. And then last night, I was like, okay, I'm gonna get an extra hour of sleep because the time changed. The time changed. I was so excited. For that. And I woke up at the same time anyway. I woke up at six thirty in the morning, and I'm like, oh, I know. Do, do you notice that the deeper you get into prep, that your sleep is more and more affected? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, like, it's it's been, like, hit or miss for me, but this prep, I've definitely had, like, the prep insomnia the last three weeks. And it's brutal. Yeah. It's brutal. So that is something I need to focus on. I think part of that, too, has to be do with my adrenals and, like, super high caffeine right now with how hungry I was and things like that. So adrenal detox and caffeine detox is coming for me. I think that might have been part of my problem this weekend, too, because my caffeine intake was higher this weekend than what it typically is. Um, just because I wanted to be alert and awake like, everywhere oh, I went. Be a weekend. I know. Yeah. Like I have to be able to put words together. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, uh, that's probably it. part of it. That's probably part of it. Yeah. Um, I haven't been able to go to the bathroom either. I finally was able to go to the bathroom today, but okay. just a little bit. Okay. Yeah. I, I get that way too. When I travel, my revived gut health shake, magnesium, things like that. I yeah. use an all natural uh, muscle or um, laxative called Swiss Chris that you get at Whole Foods. Mm. Um, that's really good and it's like gentle. It doesn't like, you know, like push things. It just yeah. kind of lets you go. And here's a secret too yellow dragon fruit. Yeah. Was it you that told me that or was it Drew? Somebody told me that. It was, it was... yellow dragon fruit. No, I think it was, I think it was Greg. I think okay. Greg told me. That is yes. our fit body fusion, like secret fruit is the yellow dragon fruit. All of our clients that ever have like constipation issues, especially close to stage. I should have thought of it. It's that. gotta be yellow, but I don't know what that thing does. It's magic. You eat all of it and it's go. Hmm. Yep. Interesting. It's, they're hard to find. You got to get them at like, you know, the whole food yeah. stores and things like that. But if you can find them and you're like really struggling, try one of those. I'm hoping that when I get home and just get back on a normal Absolutely. schedule, it'll be fine. Yeah. Like I said, I went a little bit today. So. That's good. That's good. That means it's coming. Literally. I think probably with sleep, stress, yes. the high caffeine, yes. all the yes. things that affects your digestion. Well, it's just sitting at the, at the expo all day too. So, you know, I would, I, I'm not like, I don't want to watch prejudging for every single division, no. but if you want to get good seats, you have to watch prejudging right. for every single division. Yeah. And you have to get there two hours early to claim <laughs> so, your seat for the yes, first division. Correct. So I did that, you know, because all the divisions I wanted to watch were at the end. So of course I had to wait the whole day, you know? I didn't even really go around the expo. I was just expo. about to say, did you get a chance to go around the expo this really? year? Okay, yeah, me neither. I, I kind of, it stinks, you know, as an athlete, you can't really yeah. walk around. I wanted to go walk around and literally got yelled at by Jamie. She's like, get back to your room. Yeah. <laughs> um, I heard it was good. I mean, and I heard they were giving out things again. I know that yeah. was like a big thing since COVID. I went and got energy drinks. I went to rain. Okay, and they were giving day. everything yeah. out. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, the girls right are showing up with like cookies yeah. and all these energy drinks and protein bars. And I was like, oh, cool. They're actually like, giving things out again. So I know people were really happy about that. Yeah. Like the free samples and, and things like that. I There's a lot like of the, cool booths too. I felt like the expo was small though. It was small, but yeah, small. it was small and it was also like tight. Compact. Yeah. Like, so it was like, everybody was like in one spot. Yes. So yeah, I had to go do an interview one day and I couldn't find the NASM booth. It was the NASM booth and it was like in the middle and I like could barely like, yeah. yeah. And it was yeah. right next to the raw booth. So there were, there was like a big line of people First, all yeah. around and, things like that so um in comparison to the setup from vegas last year did you like this better or did you like that better from the athlete standpoint from the athlete standpoint i like it in orlando better yep. because everything was so easy to get around yeah no matter what the olympia is always going to be in a very large 
setting, like mm -hmm. an expo hall compared uh, connected to a hotel or something like that. So there's always going to be some sort of walking or travel. Yeah. But here, at least the walking was contained. I will say the only thing is that they they tell the athletes where they're going to be staying so late and then our coaches book rooms at thinking of where they're going to be at yes. other hotels so our coach was at a different hotel yes so we had a walk it was a thousand steps each direction in 15 minutes each direction so if i needed cardio i walked to her okay um there was a couple times where we brought her over here mm -hmm. that was the only thing that was off this weekend but other than that this was an, a, that's another a, a great experience yeah my other thing though is with it being here in Orlando, all the seats at finals were flat again. Yes. They're no not in a theater. Seating, there's no stadium seating. So if you are not in those first four front rows, you're looking at all the screens. So you might yes. as well just be Back in your pajamas and yes. be in the PPV area. Yes. So that's what we did. We got the, the pay-per-view. The first night, um, I got the pay-per-view and I watched it while I was doing my, my training and my cardio in the gym. That's what, that's what Drew did. Yeah, we were watching. I was like, it is what it is. Um, I didn't have any... Um, I didn't have any girls in it that, that night anyway, so it didn't, it didn't matter. And then um, last night, we got actually where we are right now is a restaurant. So we got the pay-per-view and we watched it on the laptop here at the restaurant and just ate dinner. We got dressed up and everything. Because again, I didn't want to spend $400 on a ticket where I wasn't going to see anything. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm like, I, what's the point if I can't see anything and I'm really watching the screens on the side anyway? Yeah. I might as well spend the $75 for the pay-per-view. Like if I spend And then I can go back and I can ticket. watch it again too. Right. That's if, the other thing too. And then you can right. rewatch. If yeah. I spent that amount of money on my ticket, I'd have been pissed. Yeah. I, I wouldn't yeah. have been happy. No, that's what I said. I was like, there's there people trying to scalp them for like a thousand dollars and stuff like that. I was like, no, we're not doing that. And it's so funny too, because you spend all this money, right? And this is something that Drew said last night, which is so funny because bikini was third to go on. So once they awarded like the, the two first men classes, classic and MP, everybody got up and left. And he was like, oh, isn't it funny that when there's girls on stage in a two piece bikini, all the guys get up and go. Oh, right. So literally you could have probably like gotten in yeah. with like a super cheap ticket toward the back. Yeah. And then for bikini, just yep, walk your way up. Because yep. by the time bikini was on, nobody was, was in there. Those, those front half of those seats. Well, so I, never really, I never really this. understand why they don't like split it up even with tickets sometimes like that. Because... They do that at NPC shows. Yes. You know, they, they have men's and women's tickets and things like that. Mm -hmm. Do that here. Like, I, they kind of do because they have, you know, the women in with the men and that's, those are the two draws and things like that, whatever. So it's kind of that, yeah. but it's, but it's not, it's not, you know, like, yeah. and I get it logistically it makes it difficult to put one division in and one division out. Yeah. I get all of that. I understand that, but I feel like there's, there's gotta be a better way to do it. I think so too. There's I think they're definitely going to take it. it back to Vegas and they the, are. the verbiage that they were kind of talking about in the athletes meeting, which was encouraging is that they knew that Orlando was organized better for the athletes. Yes. That's what they were saying in the athletes. Yes. So they, they are aware yeah. of how difficult it is for us in Vegas. So hopefully they can figure out a way to kind of find a venue that can be big enough to host the entire event, but also not have the athletes walking around of four different hotels in the middle of the day. Drew and I were talking about that on the way here, of like how many hotels I had to go to last year just for pre-judging, like yeah. between hair, makeup, tan, like it was ridiculous. Yeah. We were walking around the entire strip the first half of the morning. Yep. So hopefully next year they'll, that, that, it's good they're aware of it. That's why, yes. you know, that way they can hopefully fix it and find something and Make it a better. Well, they're experience. doing it the resort world. They said that they're doing a resort world next next year. And did they just say Vegas. that? In... They said it during the finals last night. Did they say the date yet? Yeah, the twelfth of October. Okay. Yes, that weekend, whatever that weekend is. Okay, so they're going to keep it in o October. Wait, where are we right now? We're in uh, November. We're in November. So they're going to move so they're it up. Moving one. It. They're trying to move it up. Okay. Um, I think it'll hopefully it'll eventually be back to September. Yes, you know what I, mean? I think they're trying to do yeah. that. Yeah. So I think they're going like. Month by month. Yeah. If you notice, year it, was, by year. it was December, November, November, October. We'll be back to September. Exactly. <laughs> Soon exactly. enough, we'll be back to September. Okay. So we're going back to Vegas. We're going to Resort World in October. Okay. Yeah. I was waiting for that announcement. Yeah. They, they did that. Uh, Jake announced it last night. Okay. Yeah. But it's Resort World in, in Vegas. Is well, doing. you know, I need to know that. Yeah. Yeah. You're already qualified. So, <laughs> hey, I need to know too. I, yes. go, I go every year exactly. regardless. <laughs> now I'm going to go book all my hotel rooms right now. I know, right? For real. Well, that was the thing too. Like, so when I, I booked the, the Hyatt here, um, the main host hotel is here, Rosen. Yes. 
but I didn't realize that because every other show that they've had here in Orlando has been at the Hyatt. And I like the Hyatt too. <laughs> well, and I get points there. Maybe and all that's still too. That's they had they had better room choices over there too. The food. Yeah, so it's a beautiful like, restaurant. Whatever. There. It's it and it actually was kind of nice because I feel like all of the activity cluster stuff was over here. Yeah. So when I wanted to go and just be by myself, I went over there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's nice. actually kind of nice. And the way it's set up, like it's, you know, the convention center's in the center and then you got the Hyatt here and the Rose in here. So it's not like you're going a long distance not or anything like that. So no, you're like the convention like, center's in cool. the middle of both. So yeah. like if you needed to go to the Hyatt or run here, that's what I'm saying. It was very convenient this year, but the finals, I, is that's an issue. The yeah. stage was gorgeous though. Yeah. They did a good job. Of the wow. Stage the year. stage was gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. The door opening and the lights. Yeah. And I know that they really worked on that. This year. Absolutely. I think they did a really good job with that. <laughs> Previous know. years were not so not classy. So <laughs> yeah. It was very luxurious. So it felt like this year. Yeah. I think it was good for me this year to watch that. Um, in the spot that I'm in now, I yeah. think that was very motivating. Yeah. I got goosebumps watching that center door on the main open. that main stage open, and then you kind of see the silhouette of the athlete. And I would just get goosebumps, and I was like, "Yeah, I want to be there." You yeah. know, I think that was really good for me to watch. That's going to be something I'm going to that feeling I'm going to keep in my brain now going into this improvement season as the feeling I want going mm -hmm. into next year, right? Um, but it was it was it was gorgeous. So yeah. stunning. So to finish out, I think one of the things we should talk about too is, you know, last night Derek Lunsford did win the title for the Open Men. And when he was announced as the winner, Hadi Chupan, was, who was the reigning at the time Olympia winner, didn't even stick around for photos. He took off his medal and walked off stage. So thoughts on that? Yeah, Drew and I were talking about this this morning. You know, so uh, the thing with that too is their teammates. Yeah. You know, so they that's, together. That, yes, that's something to keep in mind. And uh, last year, um, Hottie, beat, Hottie beat Derek. Yeah. And um, Hottie, you know, fell to the ground last year when he won. And Derek, like, put his hand on his back and was there for him. And um, I was shocked by that uh, last night, especially with Derek being the man that he is. Mm -hmm. uh, Derek is. And you could see he was upset by it. Derek was. Derek was, v w didn't know what to do. And Correct. I know Derek. Derek wanted to follow him. Yeah. <laughs> Knowing Derek, he would want to. You saw Brandon Curry come over and be like, you know. Just right. Just to... chill. Yeah. yeah. Because I, Derek's heart is, I want to go talk to my teammates. Yeah. You know, make, make him sure he was okay. I don't know. I don't know why you would do that. That's definitely an emotional reaction mm -hmm. for sure. Um, you know, how he was feeling in that moment. Robbed upset whatever he felt i still think that good sportsmanship definitely got to stay and yeah. hang around uh that's your teammate you yes. know so I, I don't know i think that that was that was I there's think, an apology yeah, <laughs> I, I would agree with that and i think you know derek talked about it during the seminar today the superstar seminar about about the reaction he's like i understand how high he was feeling and i get all of that he's like you put your heart and soul into this and and you got people counting on you. And with him too, he feels like the whole country of Iran is counting on him and things like that. So I get all of that. But I think that sometimes things happen and how you respond to them is more important than the thing that actually just happened. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that shows you somebody's character pretty quickly. Yeah. Right? Um, I under, again, I, I, can, I can feel for Hadi. I can understand where he's coming from. But at some point, you have to say, this isn't all about me. Mm -hmm. It's, you, you have to remember, they, like we were talking about before, they worked just as hard as I did to be here. Yeah. You yeah. know, they're not, they're not any less deserving than I am. We, we, we all put the blood, sweat, and tears into this. Yeah. You know, it didn't go my way today. You know, you look at somebody, again, like Brandon Curry, who has won the title, and he's standing up there. Yeah. He's congratulating. Yeah. You know, you, you have to. To do that, yeah. As a reason, everybody in that sport. top five is bum. They didn't win, right? You Absolutely. Know? Of course, we all Absolutely. we all show up to win. You don't show up. We talked about this before on the podcast. You don't go into a show not wanting to win it. You yeah. always go in wanting to win it. But isn't it? We talk about Derek's character, and there he was making, you know, the, the understanding. Right? right. I understand where he's coming I don't, from. And he said he's like, I don't, I don't think any less of him or anything like that. That's that's and that's the character. Yeah. And, you know, and that's, you know, as teammates too, you feel each other, right? It's, we talk about that all the time, the healthy competition, you know, last year, Derek losing to him makes him work a little bit harder. That should make Hottie work a little bit harder. And they both worked and they did their best. Listen, Derek's an animal. I mean, last night it was, I could have made an argument truly for either, 
obviously I'm friends with Derek, so I'm super happy. Yeah. And I think that he is going to be, he already is such a great representation for our sport, but also that category, but also just his story. I mean, now he's won two Olympia titles the only in one two that. different divisions. He's the only he's the one, one that's ever do that. What an incredible human. Like, yep incredible athlete um they're he's getting ready to still. have their baby yeah he's so Denver. young yeah he's got a long time in this sport yep. like so i'm i'm yeah i'm i couldn't be happier for him i'm sure more will come out about the team and how they're going to handle that and i would be very curious how honey is going to respond as well about his team and the the response and um kind of how they're going to manipulate that or not manipulate it kind of talk about that or smooth yeah. it over per se right Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and just kind of uh, wrap up this whole weekend. Okay. Where are you off to next? Where am I off to? <laughs> okay, so today I go home, and I'm home for two days, and then we leave on Wednesday to go to Texas. Drew, uh, Drew's figure athlete oh, that just right. turned pro yeah, yeah, at yeah. Uh, Universe, Heather Esslinger, is making her pro debut at um, Battle Up. Is it Battle Up this weekend or Galvanized? One of those show this weekend? Burn it, Texas State uh, Bernadette, Bernadette show. So we're going to be heading there. We're going to be there all week with her for her pro debut. And then um, after that, we're at Atlantic Coast working. Okay. Um, and then we're moving our gym and moving and doing all the things. Is that what the, is that what the announcement was? Was the moving the gym? The yes. Location? Yes. So we, we just signed a lease last week for a new location for our gym. Okay. It's only moving up the street. Not, not, we're not moving like to a different city That's or still anything. a big undertaking. It's huge. It's a huge <laughs> undertaking. Yes. <laughs> So that's um, are going to be our first project when we get back and starting to work on that. Um, and then we're also getting a secondary home in Scottsdale, Arizona. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Yep. So we were looking at like Texas area or more out west. Just with how much traveling we have, we need something on the east coast and the west coast. Yeah. Just kind of have a hub. Um, so we're going to go out to Scottsdale for the first half of next year for sure. We rented an apartment out there for a year. Um, that's where Fifth Body is and Jamie yeah. and Greg as well. Yeah. So we're going to be out there. Wow. Okay. Nothing changes. We still have our house in Florida yeah. and we're not renting it or anything like that. I have all my hair appointments and things <laughs> in like, Florida. I, can't leave. <laughs> I mean, it's it's going gonna, it's gonna to be wild. And getting, we're getting a secondary home. So yeah, that these were all the things that were happening behind the scenes with the hurricane that we okay. got. And I, we okay. had to make these decisions because my lease is up on my gym at the end of the year. And then we were trying to figure out if we, what we were doing with moving, but, 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 and all these decisions had to be made right before the Olympia. Yeah. So wow. it was a lot, but we're, we're, that's what we're going to be working on. Okay. All right. Well, and you are going to be finishing out your prep. I am. I am. How are you I feeling? Feel like I'm, I'm good right now. Like I said, I mean, I feel like. Um, especially after doing check-ins and stuff with Jamie when I got here, I feel like I, this is the best look I've had so far. Thank so I'm, I'm happy about that. Um, I still got to, like I said, when I get home, I got to pull off a couple more pounds, but really like it's, it's just there. kind of, it's just kind of, kind of just doing everything right going yep. forward, you know, crossing um, your T's, dotting your I's. Yeah. And I, so close. I have a lot of girls that are getting on stage in the next couple of weeks myself, like as far as their suits, their posing, all that kind of stuff. So I got to get all of that stuff done prior to leaving for Hawaii. <laughs> and, um, <sighs> you know, and then I'm going for two weeks, you know, and I've got still girls that are competing in December too. Right. So it's like, uh, <laughs> I told Dan, I was like, you're going to have to pack some bikinis and stuff for me and everything and, you know, things like that. I'm like, you got to pull, pull up the slack while I'm gone and all of that. That's a whole form of anxiety within itself. It being is. gone from home that long and how much work that you have to do at home, yep. right? So it's like, right. when you come back, you're going to be like inundated with work. Exactly. I yes. told, so it's almost like you have to pre, you have to catch up and then yes. overdo it so that when you get back, you're not so far behind. And that's exactly the mentality I'm in right now. I'm like, okay, Olympia just ended. I've got less than two weeks to get all my shit together. Exactly. <laughs> so the next two weeks, it's about dropping two pounds. Yeah. Uh -huh. And over preparing. Pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. That's pretty much what it is. That's where I am. So well, if anyone can, it's going to be you. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, physique-wise, I feel great. Physique-wise, I feel like I'm good, you know? Good. And it's just about executing, going forward, all of that. And I'm good. So it's just robot mode, like you talked about. Absolutely. Robot mode. And then... And then we just go from there and then uh, we'll see what, what happens. I'm, I'm getting excited. Like after seeing my pictures and stuff like that, again, checking in with Jamie, like you just the next level kind of thing versus doing it by myself. Yeah. And 
I'm excited about my shape. I'm excited about my look. I'm excited about all those things. So it's like, okay, now I just, I just got to put it on stage. Now I just got to finish it and put it on stage. Yeah. Yeah. So really I'm excited there. for you. Yeah. So yeah, that's, 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 that's what, that's Let's where I'm go. at right now. Let's go. <laughs> I said, once the Olympia was done, it's her turn. Know, now we're shifting all the focus on know, her. Right. So we'll do another, do you want to do another one of these podcasts this week too? Since we, since we did two this week, we might as well do another one might as well. this week. Yeah. So we'll do that. Um, when I get home, I'll uh, put this all together and publish it for you guys and, and get it out in the next day or so. And then we'll set up for our next one this, this week. Perfect. And then we'll do one more before I leave to go to Hawaii. Okay. And then uh, we'll try to we'll gauge and yeah, see we'll how she's feeling. Do. She's going to be doing a lot of traveling. Yeah. And so it's we'll... The hard thing is, is when I get to Hawaii and when I get to Japan is the time differences too. So, right. you know, Hawaii is five hours behind. Okay. And then Japan, I think, is 13 hours behind, I think. So we'll put out so, this one. This is an yeah. extra one for you guys. We'll make sure we get one in next week. Get you guys yep. some more content within the first half. Get caught up. Yep. And yep. then we'll kind of see how Sean's yep. feeling. But we'll be back if if we have to take a week or something there. We're not going anywhere. Yeah, yeah. We'll I think I think one thing that Sean and I realized this weekend is how much of you watched this podcast yeah. and mm-hmm. how much great feedback we got. That was so, something so cool to hear at Meet the Olympians is how many of you came up and said, we love the podcast. Yeah. And, how motivating that is. I'm yep. so glad that we did this. I know. And that we, you and I said, if we're going to do it, we're going to do it right. Yep. And we're going to commit. And we, yep. we have been consistent and, with it yep. and everything like that too. So, yep. you know, we have to think about like actually planning one where you guys can come. Cause we didn't even think about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doing with, you know, Q and A's and all that kind of stuff too. You Next know? year it's going to so, be bigger and then we're going to rent a room yeah, and yeah, have yeah. You, that we have the visions now. <laughs> right. We exactly. have all the visions. Yeah. So, <laughs> Okay, awesome. Well, that's going to do it for us here at the 2023 Olympia. We are officially done and on to the new year, which is crazy. Wow. And then we've got shows coming up, and then we've got Q's Cock on the Stage coming up, too. Yay! That's going to start out the new that's year. <laughs> that's going to start out the, the brand new year right at the beginning. I love that. Um, what a way to start the year. <laughs> so with that episode 10 11, 11, 11 episode 11 the olympia whatever we're gonna call this okay we need more we're, coffee we're out bye, bye. guys <laughs>